Ah, <sighs> what, what a fun video moment. It's like exciting. And that font, can you get enough of that font? So good. Uh, four years ago, my mom randomly showed up to my house at 2 a.m. Like, uninvited. I was very surprised. Put yourself in that place. Imagine that. To get a knock on your door at 2 a.m. My mom drove four hours from Houston, Texas, where I grew up, to Waco, Texas, where I was going to school, because she got a call from a friend. A friend who was like, Kima's talking too fast. She's not making any sense. <laughs> and when my mom showed up, she confirmed that something was probably wrong when I began to like cuss at her and shout at her things a sane black child would never do. <laughs> yeah. So she took me to the ER. This is not a photo from the mental hospital, um, but it was my third year in undergrad as a theater performance major. And it was the week of my 20th birthday. I almost spent it in a mental hospital. I don't remember how I felt, you guys. I just remember being so pissed that I was missing spring break. Like, I was like, why is this happening to me now? Why now? Like, instead of going to South by Southwest, which is an amazing comedy and music and film festival, I was like hanging out in the hospital with this guy who was talking out loud to himself in at least three languages, including English and Spanish, and a girl who thought she was Jesus. <laughs> like it wasn't the plan. <laughs> and um, after I got out of the hospital, I was really confused. I had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and I didn't have anything to focus on but my feelings. And there were some uncomfortable feelings, you guys. Like, when you don't know what anxiety or depression feel like, but you've only heard of them, whew, it was an awkward time. I didn't know what to do. I was emotionally confused, and I couldn't sit still. At one point, I even got, like, this dramatic haircut. It was, like, it's a typical breakdown move, and it wasn't, like, as bald as Britney's. You know what I mean? But it was way shorter than anticipated. <laughs> so I just had a moment thinking about the grow out period, you know, and you cut it too short and then you have to deal with that for months. Ah, <sighs> back to perspective. <laughs> so yeah, when I left the hospital, I just had to deal with myself and live with myself. And I was really worried about my future. I was afraid of me. I didn't trust myself or believe in myself the way that I had, you know, and I really had. Um, and I was just thinking about the way the disorder could and would affect me for the rest of my life. Eventually, I got tired of uh, being so bummed out. And um, I began to fight those concerns. Whenever I start feeling weird about what's going on, Whenever I forget that I'm dope and that I'm a boss bee, I listen to Kanye. <laughs> That's right. Come on, guys. I mean, like, why not? Like, I could listen to Beyonce, but her confidence makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am looking for irrational levels of confidence for myself. I need that. Like, Kanye definitely gives himself enough credit. And I don't think enough of us do. I think we need to tap into our inner yay. I think if we can actually acknowledge the positives and what we already have and what we already do, we can start to acknowledge the positives and who we already are. Love yourself. Um, and then, then, and only then, once we can see what we have, can we begin to use what we have to get what we want. <laughs> Amazing. My button skills are out of this world. So about two years ago, 
I was feeling so low, <laughs> so, so confused. I needed to help myself. So I went to a bookstore and looked for the self-help section. <laughs> um, so I was in Barnes and Nobles, or uh, I believe you guys pronounce it Waterstones. <laughs> That's why you buy your literature. Uh, in the self-help section, when I saw a cute book with a rainbow on it called Positive Psychology by Miriam Akhtar. Shout out to Miriam, wherever you are, Miriam. Thank you, girl. <laughs> Um, and the book had cool stuff in it, like uh, the idea of choosing optimism. Choose it. Be active about it. You can use realistic optimism to not be weird about positivity, but like use fact-based positivity. You just have to like find the good stuff. And uh, creating an ideal vision for your life, which is huge. You know, and once you can create that vision and allow yourself to really dream, you can work on how to get there from where you are. The book also had a really cool reminder to, to be kind to myself and to keep going, to not judge my efforts, and to be grateful for every small step I achieved, which is a, a quote from the book. Yeah, it was a good one. Shout out to Miriam. By using the stuff that I learned in positive psychology, I began to see that like, I was moving closer. It just didn't always seem like it, but I was moving closer. Um, and I was able to see my dreams as things that were possible. I started to... Be realistic about it, you guys. I took a realistic approach. I took my head out of the clouds. I began to turn my dreams into goals. <laughs> I turned those goals into plans. <laughs> ah, and I turned those plans into actions. <laughs> guys, thank you. And it's super easy. It's great. It's a great little breakdown system. You go from there to there. And all of a sudden, it's doable. Like, those actions don't have to be huge. When I respond to emails, I feel like I've done something. I know I'm moving closer. Like, when I take a shower, that's good for my brand. I'm looking out for my brand image. <laughs> it's so easy to feel accomplished, you guys. So easy. So, comedy. Comedy. It's a thing. It's a thing I do. It's helped me to overcome so much and to get through so much. Like the low times when I couldn't find work or fulfillment or fulfillment at work, and I would cope by partying and other stuff that I'm not sure we can talk about. <laughs> it's not Ted XXX UAL. <sighs> But comedy would get me through, like comedy, therapy, and mood stabilizers, but comedy <laughs> is what would help me to share and empower my perspective. Um, and I'm having a great time, you guys. I'm able to challenge audiences. It's so fun when you get to talk to like, people who like, seem a little racist, and then you get to feel it out and talk smack to their face, it's the best feeling. It's like reparations, you guys. I get to make sense of my experiences, positive and negative, and find humor in them, which can be hard, but I love a challenge. <laughs> uh, and comedy has become my dream. And it is a scary dream to have. Like, do you know how broke comedians are, you guys? You know what I mean? Do you know how many people think that they're funny? <laughs> Just saying. But before we, before we <laughs> doubt me too much, <laughs> let's tap into my inner Kanye. <laughs> what have I done since my diagnosis? I bossed up, you guys. I moved from Texas to California to London. I graduated from university twice. Hashtag educational privilege. <laughs> I got to get my privileges where I can. 
even if I have to pay for them. <sighs> and I've definitely been gaining comedy experience along the way. Like, even those times when I partied too hard were actually really good for networking. <laughs> networking is crazy. <laughs> and I now do stand-up and improv and drag in London and around the UK. Like, I even got to perform in Amsterdam. And you guys, I thought that would only ever be a pipe dream. <laughs> I was really committed to having that joke in there. I was like, I gotta do it! I don't care! Uh, yeah, and it's been really cool. Like, I now host this comedy night called Fuck It Up, FOC, Films of Color. Uh, and we center and platform comedians of color that identify as more femme of center. And that's something that really means a lot to me, because when I initially moved here and was doing comedy on the scene, I was surrounded by, like, Trevor and Dan, uh, whose perspectives are a little stale to me. So I decided to create something of my own. Uh, and I look forward to doing a month-long run in Edinburgh later this year. So yeah, guys. I have bipolar, and so what, you guys? I'm a freaking boss. I'm a freaking badass. <laughs> yes! Yes! Applaud my genius! Applaud my madness! Uh, it's, it's actually pretty useful, you know? Like, I am emotionally intelligent AF due to my vast emotional range. <laughs> Uh, and, like, because I'm so open about my mental health, all of my friends know that they can talk to me about theirs, uh, which is really invaluable. It's actually really nice. Um, and I am empathetic AF, you guys. Like, I really can relate to London's weather, how the, the sun just shines super intensely and then retreats with no explanation. <laughs> I get that. I do that. I've been able to use what I have to get what I want. But like, enough about me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what about you? <laughs> I was getting my Kanye so much, I hit a bit of narcissistic streak. I made you applaud my genius, <laughs> who does that. What about you, okay? What do you have? And what do you want? Because guys, <laughs> all we got is what we got. And it's not cool to act like we don't want what we want because we think we don't got what we need to have it. <laughs> yeah. So when I ask you what you got and what you want, I really want to ask you, sir, person, <laughs> I don't mean to assume your gender, person, What have you always been ashamed to admit that you want? Tell us now, free yourself! <laughs> free yourself! It's okay. I love you love photography? Boudoir, Boudoir photography, yes! <laughs> yes, do that! Don't be afraid of that. They know. Do you? <laughs> <laughs>